Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Cole, Professor and Associate Chairman in the Department of Orthopedics at Rush University Medical Center. The subject is a discussion on biceps tenodesis versus tenotomy. I think the first question is who really needs biceps surgery? Clearly, as patients who actually have the problem, those patients who have failed non-surgical care who don't want that problem anymore. The most common treatment is actually patients who have concomitant diagnoses, such as instability, rotator cuff pathology, superior labral pathology, or osteoarthritis. I think the question has to be asked, who really should get a tenotomy, especially given the prevalence of the literature supporting tenodesis to date? There is a small subgroup, those who have a risk for infection, those who are unable to comply with post-operative rehabilitation. That may be a group that still could benefit from a tenotomy. The challenge is that tenotomy doesn't always work. When we turn to the literature, it can provide good pain relief, but on average, there's up to a 35% poor functional result, and up to 20% of these patients will actually complain of cramping or pain. Now, I'll take a deeper dive into the value of tenotomy versus tenodesis based upon the existing literature. Alternatively, who should get a tenodesis? I would argue that it's virtually everybody else. It's interesting, when you look at the trends in biceps management, this is a study that we looked at the treatment of slap lesions relative to the treatment of biceps pathology. Now, we've seen at Rush, amongst five shoulder surgeons, the average age of superior labral repairs has actually decreased over time. But that's been in contrast to the treatment of biceps pathology, which has actually increased exponentially. So we've had a significant trade-off and a recognition that biceps pathology may be the source of pain and may be the required treatment in the age group that really presents to us with presumed slap pathology, but is more likely biceps pathology. There are two great studies that have looked at the trends in long head biceps tenodesis. The first one is a pearl diver database using CPT codes from 2008 to 2011. And essentially shows something that we showed at Rush, which is an increase in the prevalence of biceps treatment over time. We duplicated the study, but at a different time frame, from 2011 to 2014, we saw the same thing as the previous study, increased prevalence of biceps treatment over time. And when we take a snapshot of what's happening clinically, still tenotomy is performed at a reasonable rate. And it begs the question, is this the right treatment for our patients, especially given the preponderance of research that supports tenodesis over tenotomy? The literature that looks at tenotomy versus tenodesis in an isolated fashion is actually pretty compelling. These are two meta-analyses that looked at tenodesis that showed lower rates of deformity and higher constant scores and a similar or lower complication rate with good patient satisfaction. This is a level three study that showed that tenotomy was associated with a higher rate of deformity, but similar strength and function compared to tenodesis. A level one study comparing tenodesis to tenotomy showed that tenodesis was associated with less deformity, but again, comparable outcomes. What about when tenodesis or tenotomy is performed in a setting of rotator cuff repair? This is a much more common clinical setting. Remember, isolated biceps tenodesis or tenotomy is not that common. We most commonly perform this in association with other pathology treatment. This is a meta-analysis that suggested that tenodesis had less deformity, but comparable outcomes when rotator cuffs were repaired at the same time. When we get into the weeds a bit further, comparing tenodesis or tenotomy in patients undergoing rotator cuff repair, this study showed that young patients with large rotator cuff tears had greater improvement following tenodesis compared to tenotomy. Another systematic review and meta-analysis suggested the same thing. Tenodesis at the time of rotator cuff repair had a greater constant score and less risk of deformity compared to tenotomy. This meta-analysis demonstrated a very similar finding Tenodesis had a greater constant score and reduced Popeye deformity with slightly longer surgical times compared to tenotomy in the setting of concomitant rotator cuff repair. A very good level one study comparing tenodesis to tenotomy at the time of rotator cuff repair suggested that tenodesis also had less deformity and these patients were actually stronger in supination. This meta-analysis showed something very similar. Tenodesis had a greater constant score, reduced Popeye deformity, Again, longer surgical times, obviously, compared to tenotomy, but these surgical times are typically in the 10 to 15 minute range. And finally, this study, a level four study, looking at a retrospective case series, showed that tenotomy was weaker in abduction. So what's the take home message? Biceps procedures are increasingly common. Clinically, tenotomy and tenodesis can have similar outcomes, but I think the literature currently supports tenodesis with improved constant scores, in several instances improved patient reported outcomes, improved strength and function, and reduce deformity. So why tenodesis? I think if we contemplate the literature that compares tenotomy versus tenodesis in isolation, or tenotomy versus tenodesis at the time of rotator cuff repair, the outcomes are similar or better, but rarely if ever worse than tenotomy. So in my opinion, it really suggests that tenodesis is a dominant treatment strategy when treating the biceps tendon either in isolation or at the time of rotator cuff repair. Thank you for your attention.